Hey guys, it's Cody with Taking 20 and welcome back to my Roll20 Master Series. So today's video is going to be on dynamic lighting. I'm going to show you guys a few different tips and tricks that I've picked up, not just for actually lighting your maps, but also a few different tools to have handy whenever you get ready to create these maps that hopefully will help make lighting your next map a little easier. I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Okay guys, so right off the bat I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer and that is that dynamic lighting is only available to plus and pro level subscribers. So if you are a free user, you won't be able to use dynamic lighting, you won't be able to utilize this tool. Uh, so I know all the rest of the videos I've done so far have been for free users. I've had a lot of misconceptions that uh, you have to be subscribers to use my stuff. This is the first video that that is actually the case. So if you are a free user, just so you know, you won't have access to the dynamic lighting. And uh, personally, as a quick plug for Roll20, I think it's worth every penny. But, uh, uh, you know, something you guys should maybe consider if you are having a lot of fun on Roll20 is to jump into the subscription. Okay, now that that stuff's out of the way, let's talk about uh, actually dynamically lighting your map. The first thing you want to do is turn dynamic lighting on. Let me show you how to do that. You can go up here to your page toolbar. Click on the page settings that you're on, scroll down until you get to dynamic lighting, and what I want to do for all of my stuff is I just check these first four boxes regardless. So you're going to turn on dynamic lighting, you're going to turn on enforced line of sight so your players can't see through walls. Uh, you only want to update on drop. I'll explain what that does here in just a little bit, but you definitely want to check this box in my opinion. And uh, you definitely want to restrict movement as well. These kind of couple together. Now this last box can be checked or unchecked. You can use dynamic lighting in a lit room with ample lighting just to create barriers of vision for your players, like walls that they can't see around. Or you can also leave this unchecked and it will consider it like the place is dark. So unless there is a light source or unless you give your players dark vision, they won't be able to see anything. Their screens will literally just be black. This is used for caves or dungeons that aren't well lit. For now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this global illumination off. So I'm going to leave it off. I'm going to uncheck it. And I'm just going to hit OK. And as you can see here, the map has gotten sort of dim. OK, now that we have dynamic lighting turned on and we have global illumination turned off, let's talk about actually lighting, dynamically lighting the map. So we're going to go over here and we're going to go down to the dynamic lighting layer and then we're going to go and choose polygon line on our draw tool. Now on your draw tool, I like to use this just as a personal recommendation. Go over here and select neon green uh, or something that's really bright that will stand out for you. And I like small and thin for walls. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. Now once we do this, this is basically just a draw tool. So you can click anywhere you want and it will start dynamically lighting your map. Once you close your image, it will, uh, as you can see, it's kind of grayed out here and I, it will close it off and I can start a new line. Go over here, I can highlight it with the select tool and then delete it. But we want to click these into place and if you don't know, you can hold, just like the regular draw tool, you can hold shift when you click and it will kind of snap to this little grid and it'll line up nice and neat and pretty. Okay, now let's stop there. Now I can keep going, but to close this, what I want to do is I want to right click. And once I right click, that will basically finish and let me continue to draw in new places. So that's how you stop drawing if you want. Now let's go back over here and let's pick it right back up. And we're, we're going to shift click, shift click, shift click. And we're just going to go down the line, dynamically lighting this map. And I'm not going to do the whole thing for you guys here. I just want to show you guys a little bit. Uh, that's good enough for there. And then let's do this wall here as well. And then finally, let's do this little section. To right about there. And then I'm going to take my fingers off. Or you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do one more. Right there. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, 
The next thing you want to do is cover doors. So to do doors, I like to do doors in a different color, something bright as well, but I also like to make these doors quite big uh, so that I can grab them. So let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. So we have a door here, and all you're going to do is you're just going to click, click, and this is a little trick that I learned from uh, David at Table Topping. He likes to put a little flag on it, on the door, and then we're going to right click and finish it. And I'll show you why. So when you're in this and your player's like, all right, I want to open the door, sometimes it can kind of be hard to grab. So when you have these flags on them and you have a thicker line, it's easier to grab and move over for players uh, whenever they get ready to open the door. Then all you have to do is grab it, move it back if they want to close it. Now, uh, I left this open because this is a secret door. So I'm just going to copy this door, paste it again, drag one over, line it up right there, paste it again. Whoops, I guess we can't paste that one again. I thought you could turn it, but uh, apparently I'm having some issues doing that. Not a problem. We're just going to go down here and click there, click there, and click there. Right click, and you're finished. Now, let's take a look at what players can actually see. Let's go back over to the objects layer, and let's put Rendragle, my gnome, in here. And as you can see how this kind of lit up a little bit, and you can see right here where it's kind of lit up, that's because he actually has uh, dark vision. And so you can see here, I'm going to show you a little trick. See the light is not going past where those kind of invisible lines on the dynamic lighting layer are. And let me show you what he can see. If you want to see what your players can see, click on their token, hold down the control button, and press L. Control L, like look. And as you can see, that is what this player can see, that is all that he can see. All, to return, all you do is simply click off the token. As a DM, you're right back. Let me show you how to, if I move this out of the way, and go back over here to my objects layer, you can hit Control L again, and now you can see that he can see this player, this token, can see a little bit further. And that is, in essence, how you dynamically light your maps. Okay, now I want to talk about dynamic lighting when you have global illumination turned off and some of the problems that you can have when you have maps that transition from a, an open light source to a dark cave. So on the map here, you can see I'm in the GM view, uh, and this is a, an old game, as you can see, for the uh, Lost Mines of Fandelver. Uh, Lost Mines of Fandelver. Uh, and I have a human cleric here, and human clerics don't have dark vision. So, as a dungeon master, this was a little complicated here, because the interior of this cave is not well lit. So I don't want to just turn global illumination on. But the outside of the cave is lit. So, how do I handle that? Because I have global illumination turned off right now, let me show you what my human cleric can see. He sees absolutely nothing. So, that's a problem. How do we solve that? Let me show you. Over here on the DM tools, I've created a few different types of tools that are kind of go-tos that can basically create illumination for all players. So I have gone in and I have created this little light rock. And let me show you what this little light rock does. It's a tiny, tiny little rock that you don't even really notice that when it's on the map as a player. Oh, whoops, that was a mistake. Uh, you don't even really notice it's it's on the map as a player. You barely even see it. And so now let me show you what my human cleric can see. This first area is starting to be lit up. Now because this is daylight, let me go ahead and just add one more down here. A little bit closer. And now this player is getting a light source on the outside of the cave. And... It even looks like the light's kind of reflecting into it a little bit. And unless he has a torch available, he can't see into the cave. But it's creating this really cool effect that he can see the mouth of the cave. And as a dungeon master or game master, I can describe to him that there is a cave here that's too dark to see into. But I don't have to stop and put torches out here on the outside of the map. I just have a few of these little rocks set around here on the outside. So in essence, I've created a dim light inside 
so that he can't see anything up here that he's inside the cave, but on the outside he can absolutely see because it's daylight. So there's a cool little trick to create a variance in dynamic lighting on your map. Create these tiny little rocks. Now, and as you can see here, I have a few different kind of go-tos set up because once he gets inside, what's he going to say? I light a torch because he can't see. Not a problem at all. I bring over the torch straight in from my tool set. And now, as you can see, he can see 20 foot for, I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e for this game. Uh, if you're playing Pathfinder or you're playing some sort of sci-fi game, you can create different layers and levels of, of dynamic lighting. Uh, and as you can see, he can actually see inside the cave now that he has this torch. I didn't have to stop and figure out what was going on. I didn't have to stop and make a torch. I have one ready to go as soon as he says, I light a torch. So let's talk about how to set this up. The first thing you're going to need to do is go over here and create a new character. And we're going to call this character Torch2. Now, I'm not going to put this in everybody's journals. You could if you wanted people to just have a torch to be able to drag out. They could do it themselves. Uh, but I am going to be, con I do want to select the controlled and edited to everyone. Because let me tell you, as a dungeon master, the last thing I want to do when running a game is have to stop and move the torch around because the players can't. So I'm going to go ahead and give all players control of the torch. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, now all of this stuff, I'm going to completely ignore. I don't need to do need to mess with that at all. Now that I have this torch, I'm going to go back over here to the, this section, and I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go find a torch in my art library. So let's just type in torch and see what comes up. I'm betting it's the one I already have set up as my torch. Here's a torch, and it's from, the, uh, it's from my library. I'm sure there are some free ones available. I'm going to drag this over to choose a file. And I'm going to hit save. Okay. So now, back over here, I can take this torch too. I'm going to drag it onto the map. And as you can see, it's really big and it locks into place. It snaps to grid. So let's do this. The first thing we want to do is create lighting for this. We're going to go to advanced. And we want it to admit, emit, not admit, emit lighting. So we want it to emit 40 feet. And after 40 feet, we want it to start dimming at about 20 feet. So it's going to be 40 feet of bright light, or excuse me, 20 feet of bright light and 20 feet of dim light for a total of 40. We want all players to see light because all players can see the light that's being created from this. And we want to check this has sight button. It already represents the character, so we don't need to do anything there. We're just going to go ahead and hit save changes. Now we're going to right click on it. We're going to go to advanced and we're going to change it to a drawing. And we're going to kind of just make it a little bit smaller so it's not as big and bulky and kind of odd sized. And because it's a drawing, it won't snap into grid uh, all the time. Okay, now click on it. As you can see, it's been highlighted. Go over here to Torch. Go to Edit and hit Use Selected Token. And finally, hit Save Changes. All right, cool. So let's delete this torch. Let's delete this torch, and let's see if we set this thing up right. Pavilion can't see inside. Let's go ahead and take this torch two. Whoops, for some reason it highlighted. Let's take this torch two that we just created. Let's set it to right there, and let's see what Pavilion can see. Voila, you now have created a torch. You've not put it in everybody's library, but you have given everybody control over it, and now players can move it around. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys was what I meant whenever I was talking about uh, having the line of sight only update on drop and basically enforce walls. Let me show you these, these boxes again so we can uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, it restricts the movement and it only updates on drop. So if you don't set these, what can happen is, is your player can take his token and he can literally zoom it across the map and check wherever, <laughs> wherever monsters are if you don't set it up as on drop. If you don't, if you still set it up on as drop, but you don't enable like walls, 
If you had a doorway here that was closed, the player could quickly slide his token on the side, drop it, pick it back up and drop it back and kind of get a glimpse on what's going on on the other side. So that's why we want to go ahead and enable those two checkboxes so that uh, you can just, it just keeps people honest uh, and that way they won't be cheating and zooming around the maps, looking at all the mobs lying ahead and uh, getting a layout for your dungeons. So. Okay, so uh, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys all learned something new about dynamic lighting. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Uh, or if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to share with us, uh, leave those down there as well. I, I'd love to read them and learn about anything that maybe I haven't thought of yet. So, uh, yeah. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. I'll be putting out new videos every week on Roll20 tutorials, DM tips, player tips, all kinds of things. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. One, two, three. You didn't know you were going to say it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs> okay, buddy. All right, kiddo. I love you.